we're going to be doing a multimeter review today. You may have noticed when we did the cabin solar videos that I had to do some testing on the uh, voltages and, and make sure the panels were working and stuff like that. Well, if you look back real close, the first video we did, I had my old multimeter and that was the last time it was ever seen running uh, again. I, I don't know what happened, it just stopped working. So I was in a big panic to find something um, and I, I wanted something a little bit bigger, like more of a bench meter. Uh, something that I could read a little easier and so looking at some reviews there wasn't a lot of reviews on this but the ones that were out there um, well it was kind of mixed the the ones on on Amazon which you never know if they're legit uh, they said hey this thing is um, it's just like the fluke it's just like a fluke multimeter really nice quality but for half the price so I'll, I'll give it a shot okay um, that did a little more digging and apparently Voltcraft is kind of Germany's uh, version of Radio Shack. So I don't know if that's good or bad. I don't I don't mind uh, Radio Shack too much. They're not really around here anymore, but they always seemed okay kind of for your tinker tinker type of stuff. This is a the VC830 volt craft. Uh, Cat 5 600 volt, 1000 volt. I'll never really use that 6000 count accuracy, which is just the uh, decimal place um, and accuracy that you get. So it's a little more accurate than the previous meter that I had anyways, which is nice. Um, but I'm going to bust this thing open and I'll show you some features of it. So Voltcraft is a German brand. Uh, what's the... That's not the parent company though. The parent company's been around for a long time. It is... It says right on here somewhere. Oh, uh, yeah, the parent company is Conrad Electronics. It's been a German company for a long time. They've done a lot of multimeters over the years. It comes with a CD, I guess, that you can... For, I, I'll never use that ever at all. Um, so, what I use is the multimeter itself. It comes with a couple of cables. Um, actually, I'm probably going to replace these. I don't like these short little uh, probes that you got on here. They're just not long enough to get into stuff. They seem to work okay. But for basic voltage checks, you're going to go right here. So, let's go over the basics here. Um, this is an old, well, go figure, it's a Radio Shack Archer brand. Uh, old breadboard, it's all just messed up. This is from like the 80s. I used to be a little bit of a nerd, kind of into electronics. So, what this does, breadboard is basically so you can prototype circuits out. You can put different things in here. You have your, you can plug power into it, and you can kind of test out uh, circuits before you commit uh, to, you know, making a printed circuit board. And it's also good for learning. So, what do we have here? We have on the bottom here, if you can see this, let me zoom in. On the bottom here we have a, what we call a resistor then you're probably familiar with this or at least the name this is an LED or a light emitting diode and this is a standard diode this is a capacitor kind of like that there it is right there so we're gonna check all of these uh, all of these uh, components here for functionality now guys obviously there's people out there who are a, a, a lot more uh, in tune with this than I am I'm kind of the layman when it comes to electronics uh, but for basic checking things, it's it's not a, a bad thing to uh, sort of learn the basics of it. So for the first thing here, well, let's go over. Well, I forgot one thing here. Voltage. Got a got a nine volt here. So the first thing you'll check. Now this is um, right here. The first function is, uh, of course, alternating current. It's a squiggly line. So I'm not checking alternating current. I'm checking direct current or DC. So that's the next one. So it says DC. It says AC. Pretty self-explanatory. Screen's nice and easy to read. Um, the backlight's pretty cool too. It's got a really nice uh, feel to it. DC's right there, so direct current. That's what that's what your typical batteries and solar panels and all that kind of stuff will be uh, in. So it's really pretty self-explanatory. You got your positive side, your negative side. Red's positive, black is negative. So this is the most you know real common a real common use of a multimeter checking batteries. This could be a car battery a little button cell at 8.13 volts so it is low now this one is also as you can see it's in auto range mode right there so I've never owned an auto ranging meter it's kind of nice because um, it does everything for you so basically you just put it on there and it figures out where oh, finds out where you're at it's a little slow I think now you can set the range yourself if you want to change it now it's not auto ranging and it'll probably be a little faster oh, see it's out of range Let's do that one. Ah, out of range. Let's try that one. That's your most, that's where you want to be right there. But, or you can just hold it down, 
go back into auto range and it'll figure all that out for you. Has your little uh, meter down here to show you kind of in the grand scheme of things. I think when things get over 30 volts, it starts beeping or this little beeper thing turns on. But pretty straightforward here. I don't check capacitance a lot, but let's say you're working on an old engine and you have a condenser. Well, that's just a capacitor. You want to know if it's good or bad. So with this one, you have this thing called, you basically can turn on your delta, zero, zero it out. Capacitance are real sensitive measurement, especially with this kind of stuff. So this is a this has a polarity to it, negative with the, the stripe, really common, polarized capacitor. I don't have them pinned down. I'm going to get some alligator clipped. Here we go. Now you got to hold for a second with capacitance. It's a little slow. A little bit slow. Let's see if it picks up anything. 574 microfarads. Very, very slow, I think, uh, for capacitance reading. I don't know if that's normal, but let's see what this is. That's so 567. This is a 330 microfarad uh, uh, capacitor. So, yeah, you know, I took this off of a circuit board. It might actually be not the exact spec. I have found that it is very, very slow to check capacitance. So if you do that a lot, probably wouldn't recommend this meter. If you do it a little bit and you just want to see if something's okay, well, it might be okay for you. Let's see. The next thing is, and this is what I check most of the time. So continuity, um, put it on ohms, which is a resistance, hit the button that gives you your audible sound here. So, you know, in the case of a broken wire, you're going to be able to see, you know, this is obviously so you can see that there, this conducts electricity, so it's fine. But if you have a broken wire, you wonder, hey, is it hooked up to that? You can check it real quick. If it doesn't beep, it's broken. If it beeps, you're good. <clears throat> uh, ohms, let's turn this back off. Uh, standard resistance measurement here. Ohms is for checking resistance. So I'm, I don't know what this is. I don't have the color code memorized anymore. Now we're going to take this resistor right here, and we're going to see what this actually measures out at. 22.91 kilo k ohms, so 22.9 k. Um, I will get the measurement and confirm that that's okay. But that's a real basic, easy to check. And this is auto ranging, same thing. So it finds it. Uh, there's no polarity on, of course, resistors. Next one's kind of fun. This is uh, the diode symbol. So um, obviously you can see this a triangle with a line. The uh, power is supposed to flow through that way, so negative to positive. And so we have right here, I'm going to get to that in a second, but this has a line. You can't really see it. It's a silver, it's a silver line on one side here. Now, uh, most, most diodes have like a half a voltage, you know, 0.5 to 0.8 voltage drop. You'll find these on alternators, uh, rectifier circuits where it's changing uh, AC to DC. So if your alternator goes bad and you know what to check, it might only be your diodes in there. You might just be able to replace those and get back on the road again. So right here, when you hook negative up to that line, that's, that's right. That's how that symbol goes. So it only goes that way. So you have a, you have about a, uh, half a volt, 0.5 voltage drop on that's normal, normal. And then if you reverse it, watch what happens. Check this out. Nothing, nothing flows through. See, that's all it is. So that's pretty cool. The last thing we have here is an LED or a light emitting diode. Now they operate the same way. They only allow electricity to flow one way. A lot of people probably don't know that. That's why they have polarity and you can only hook them up, though, hook them up one way. Now let's see if we can. So there's a little bit of voltage going through here, probably just a, you know, a fraction of a volt. And you probably can't see this, but it's actually turning the LED on. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you might be able to see that. Look at that. 1.5 volts. It's flowing through. Now, if I turn it around, watch, same thing will happen. Nothing. Won't, won't let it flow, won't let it move. So it will flow this way, just like the other one. And I believe there's a flat side on one of these where it's, it shows what side. Yeah, it's flat on this side. So it shows you what sides pull, you know, for the negative. Probably to make it similar, we'll hook it up that way, but... The line is equivalent to that flat, I believe. So if you, same way, let's see. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So a negative goes on the side of that flat symbol. Same with this one, flows through. So 
Same kind of thing. It's a diode, so that's kind of interesting. So there's some other stuff you can check. Um, what else can you check with these things? Um, let me show you an example of a thermistor or a thermoresistor and what that looks like and why you might need to have one of these to check it. Should have something in here somewhere. Let's see. Resistance is actually a kind of a common thing to check for for diagnostics on cars and stuff. So this is a this is some sort of sensor. I'm going to guess that it's a resistor, and we're going to check the resistance. So it's going to give me something like 3.1 k. It's probably going to be moving. Let's just see how sensitive this actually is, because I don't think the sensor is actually bad. Um, if I, I took it out, because I just got a replacement one, but this is a coolant sensor. So let's see if I can hold that with one hand. So 3.159, let's see if we can heat it up. Let's see if it goes down. Now it's dropping, now it's dropping. Look at that, look at that. 2.9, 2.8, 2.7, 2.6. So the resistance is dropping just with that. Let's see if it goes back up. The heat's probably gonna be, yep, now it goes back up. So you can see it coming back up. So that's a very accurate or sensitive uh, unit or, or a sensitive machine you know this machine is sensitive enough to obviously see that it's pretty good so now we're going back up to 2.7 let's heat this up again with my just for my body heat look at that it's dropping again right so this is a coolant sensor they're actually very very sensitive in cars if you think oh it's just a, an automotive piece but actually it's very very sensitive look at that I mean it's very it knows exactly what it is so dropping to two, I mean, it just keeps dropping. So that's pretty cool. So resistance is a very common and very good measure to be able to do for diagnostics. Um, seems to be built pretty good. Uh, some people are comparing it to the old Fluke multimeters. I, I don't know, it's a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be when I got it. Um, so it's definitely a bench testing meter. So you have this little stand that you can fold out and of course set it on your, on your desk if you wanna look at it on an angle. Uh, has this over molding. It's a little bit plasticky. I've just used it a little bit in pretty uh, easy environments and it's already starting to get a little dirty. So this white will pick up dirt. So if you're using it as a field meter, be aware of that. It might not look very nice for very long, but it looks pretty clean and sanitary right now. Obviously it's kind of mo modeled after a fluke, I would think. Okay, so one thing about a lot of the multimeters on the market is they're not fused are fully fused. This one has a 600 milliamp fuse and then a 10 amp fuse. So if you're checking current, which I'm not set up to check today, and if that means something to you, this is a really nice setup because, let me show you something here. Um, with one screw, and it's a captive screw, so it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, pull that out, and you just slide this off. Of course, you can get to your battery back here, which is just powered by a, a nine volt, no, no problem. Uh, but look at this, one-stop shop here. You don't have to take the whole machine apart and you have your 10 amp fuse and your, I'm guessing five or 600 milliamp fuse right there. Um, and so they're easy to, easy to pop out and replace if you blow it or you forget which way you're hooked up or something like that. Um, it does happen. So, if, you know, it's nice to have that featured as kind of a fail safe. It won't blow up your whole uh, meter if you have things hooked up wrong, which may or may not have happened with another meter of mine. All right, that's all we have for today, guys. I hope you liked the video and enjoyed it. Um, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and like, subscribe, follow, share, uh, comment, do all those good things, and it really helps us out. Uh, so I will see you guys on the next one. Have a good day.